Mr. Medical Murder. Oh my god, come on. Well shit, here we are again, huh? <laughs> well, without further ado, let's start Clear's route. Dots. Actually, wait, what am I doing? There's, uh, Nitro Skip is N. That's right. Someone told me that last time, I think. Okay, so, N, Skip. Uh, this is Kojaku and those two, those two ladies. I don't know. Hesitate? Stop it. My reaction is too late to avoid it. Eh. No, don't touch me. Kojaku, save me! Skip boo. Oh, so this is where Clear falls out of the sky, or more likely off the top of Heibon, I guess. Why the umbrella? What are you gonna do exactly with that umbrella you just pulled out? Oh, well, what do you mean? Um, that thing you're holding, that's like... An umbrella, right? Yeah, it is. What about it? Well, it's not raining now or anything, so why did you take it out? Rain? Ah, it's true that when water drops fall from the sky on rainy days, if you, you know, take an umbrella with you, you won't get wet. I think I'll try that next time. Thank you very much. Uh... Well then, I'll be going now. Bye. Even though it still isn't raining, he opens the umbrella, turns around, and leaves. Now, I'm curious, because you're supposed to be able to track these things, because the dots down here are like the different boy's roots, so like, red would have been Kojaku so from that first choice, and yellow is clear, I think, so that choice I just made is, you know, a point towards his root. And the blue-red thing, someone said in the comments this had to do with, um, bad end, good end. How many choices you've made affect, like, the scrap sequence and how difficult it is. Like, uh, if you get more red, it's more difficult, I think is what it was. I'm kind of tempted just to see how much red we can possibly get, but at the same time, I kind of don't want to do that. Or, who knows, maybe I'll end up making the all the wrong choices. Usually they're pretty good about making it obvious about which is which. Skip boo. Hello, noise. You brat. Wait, isn't this just like a kid throwing a temper tantrum? Yeah, yeah, it is. Cut it out and actually listen for a second. I'm not pretending to not know or anything. I stare firmly at his eyes, truly trying to convince him. I really don't remember if I beat you, and I don't understand rhyme really well, so... But I'm roughly pushed down in the middle of my sentence, and he ravages my body. Oh, <laughs> skip -oo. Oh, shit, that's right. See what happens with Roof. I hear a heavy sound from somewhere, but I can't afford to think about what it is. Uh, that hurts. A strong pain runs through my arm and I grit my teeth. Uh? Please separate from Master. The fuck? Suddenly I hear the voice of a different person. I turn to look and I'm very startled. You... Hello, Master. I'm not sure when he came in, but next to the man stands the gas mask wearing guy I had met in front of Haybon. Hmm... The man in green stands cautious with his whole body like a hedgehog. Like a hedgehog. And moves to put some distance between him and the gas mask guy. This is cool, I've never seen this before. I rub my aching arm when I'm released, and then straighten myself. You. When did you come in here? Oh. Just now. Through that door over there. Master, is this a friend of yours? No. Um, but that door is... When I look at the veranda, 
I see the door wide open. No, the lock's been cut off completely. You? What have you done? Oh, well, the door was closed, so I opened it. That's not what I meant. Master? Yes, Master is my master. Are you fucking with me? The man scowls at us with a fierce expression. Even though he's looking at me like that, I have no idea what's happening at all. I mean, everything's getting confusing, and... Anyway, please don't bully Master. I won't allow it. Uh, that's ridiculous. Don't tell me he's actually getting really angry. The man in green turns his body towards the gas mask guy. The funny thing is that I think Noise is actually kind of a little offended. I can feel his bloodlust even as he faces the other way. Hey! I have to stop them. If my room gets any more messed up, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> That's why you have to stop them, okay. Oh yeah, like shit's like been tossed over here, like the table's over there and... That's right, Noise had set up a, a computer down there. Alba! Huh? Suddenly the door opens and Kojaku flies in. Are you okay? Kojaku? Why are you... I sent you a message saying I'd come talk about Mizuki, didn't I? Then I saw some weirdo in a gas mask going in through the veranda, so I came in in a hurry. Seems that someone else besides gas mask guys here too. Kojaku fixes his eyes on the gas mask man and the man in green. The way I see it is you are the ones who are in the way. So you're not that guy's friend then, huh? Don't lump me in with him. Well, we certainly have not yet put each other in a category called friends, huh? Well, anyway, you guys better get the fuck out. Uh oh. I guess I won't have any other choice but to use brute force. I'd like to see you try. The man raises the edge of his mouth to provoke Kojaku. You're shouldering some big stuff. Are you actually so weak you need to do something like that? Normally he would never be provoked by something like this, but is he actually... Kojaku puts both hands together and cracks his knuckles in front of me. Oh shit. Ah, it's useless to try and stop him. I'm gonna shut that fucking mouth of yours right now. Hey, just wait a minute. As soon as I say that, Kojaku takes a long stride towards the man. The distance between the two becomes smaller and he tries to catch him. Huh? The man dodges quickly, drops down low, and tries to hit Kojaku. Just before the man's fist can graze his cheek, Kojaku avoids it. Hey, I shouldn't be just sitting around and watching. Will you stop it? This is my room! Both of them are strong, aren't they? <laughs> Now's not the time to say something like that. Aside from with this man, Kojaku usually had lots of patience. He must have a short temper switch for some situations. And if the switch is turned on, he won't listen to anyone else. As the two of them brawl on the floor, the magazines and trash can also on the floor are kicked, stepped on, and crushed. Uh, the other stuff is fine, but please don't go near the computer. Oh god, not the computer. Can you just, like, both fucking stop? The sound of the two of them rampaging almost covers my shout, but I can hear pounding footsteps coming up the stairs towards my room. Here's Granny. You brats are too noisy. Give me a break. The door opens violently and Granny's angry voice echoes throughout the room. Kojaku, the man in green, gas mask guy, and I all stop moving and turn to look at Granny as if we were little chicks. Skip -oo. Huh? When I felt a breeze and opened my eyes, there was a gaping hole on the door to the veranda. Oh, that gas mask guy. But I kinda don't care anymore. I just don't want to get up. In the end, I fell asleep as it was. Oh, okay. Never saw that before either. The next day comes. Uh, skip. Talk it out. No way. I, I guess we can talk about it. He never planned to listen to my opinion from the start. Then just wait. Until we can come to a mutual understanding here, we're just gonna have to talk it out, okay? Yeah, if you join my team, that is. Then we wouldn't have to talk about it. Ugh. You were really strong at rhyme when I faced you before. Let's go at it again. Skip. 
Did it give Jackie last time? Was it noise this time? Noise? Cut it out already. Just like chill the fuck out. And here we are. Okay. Don't listen to him. I don't want to have to do whatever he says. Skip. Uh, call out to him. Hey, wait. Skip. Hey, it clear. Did you really hear me? So, did you really hear me? Yeah, I did. No matter the circumstances, I could never mistake Master's voice for anyone else's. <laughs> I see. Well, thanks for that, then. Huh? Clear tilts his head and stares at me. Then he pulls on my face again. Oh, uh, uh. But you're a lot more relaxed now. I wonder why. Out of all the people, I wouldn't have imagined Master to be like that. <sighs> you don't... don't pull my cheeks. I take a step back and escape from his fingers. Then I notice that Mink is watching us. Did I? Okay, cool. Uh, skip. Okay, so we're at that warehouse. Go up to Noise. I approach Noise and take a look at his hands. He doesn't take a single look away from the monitor and just keeps typing. What? N nothing. I just was wondering how you were doing. So you don't trust me. It's not that, I'm just, like, nervous. Sorry for bothering you. Scoop. Well, shit, I mean, what's the difference here? Does search imply that I care more? Like I'm going and finding him? I guess. I turn around and see Clear facing some of the black-clothed men. Oh, uh, I goofed. Fuck. I guess this is why I should probably be saving things, but... Eh. I turn around and see Clear facing some of the black-clothed men. I always love this part. The black clothed man ate Clear's punch and fell down to the ground. Uh, well, that's how it's gonna be. Skip. Approach Kojaku. I think I've done that one. Kojaku! Rushing over, I cover Kojaku's back. I haul a flying kick to the swarm of black clothed men as Kojaku takes out his sword. Although, he's only striking with the back side of it. Now, oh, but aren't, aren't these guys with dry juice? After hearing Kojaku say that, my doubts turn into certainty. Yeah. But, then why are they doing this? Master, I hear more sounds coming from the inside. They're gathering. So this was a decoy. Mink quickly starts running into the interior of the factory. Scoop. Ooh. Hesitate, whatever, doesn't matter. We should all take these guys down first. <laughs> Mink clicks his tongue, clearly irritated. Skip. Shit. Shit. Uh, uh, I fucked. Uh, back to title. Yes. Okay, so... We did search for Clear last time, right? And that fucked us, so... Call Clear's name? Is that right? Yeah! We did it! Clear? Are you okay? Yes. Clear here. I'm okay, Master. As I turn around to the sound of his voice, Clear was standing there facing some of the black-clothed men. Here we go. Looks like Clear went upstairs to the second floor. Once everyone leaves, Granny stands up and goes inside the living room. She sits down and takes a long, deep breath. I walk up to join her. Granny? What? Can we talk a little more? I look through the curtains of a closed window. I think I'll get some outside air. I get out of bed and walk up to the window. I open up the curtains, but suddenly stop. I hear something. A song? 
Uh, I peek through the curtains out to the veranda, but no one's there. Was it my imagination? Master. Whoa. I hear a voice from above and something leaps onto the veranda. Clear? Yes, it's me. You surprised me. Were you on the roof? Yes, I went up on the roof and sang a song. A song? Wait, so that was you singing? Yes, it was the jellyfish song. Jellyfish song? Yes, uh, Grandpa, the one I used to live with, talked about jellyfish often, so I made a song. Jellyfish are really like water, but they're still such wonderful and interesting living creatures all the same. Well, we're mostly like water too, you know? <laughs> I wonder if jellyfish can sleep and dream like others. Hmm. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Claire is almost speaking in riddles, and it confuses me. I don't know if it's riddles so much as, like, just him kind of thinking out loud on some maybe philosophical type stuff. I don't think he's kidding, though. Claire stands next to me and takes something out of his pocket. That umbrella again. Why do you keep that around, anyway? Is it wrong to have it? No, it's fine, but why? I thought the stars looked like they were about to fall. Uh... I look up to the sky, but there aren't any stars at all. All I can see are the lights of the illegal construction sites. Well, I guess I was wrong to expect a real answer out of this guy. By the way, Master... Hold up. You need to stop calling me that, okay? Why is that? It's kind of creepy. Just... Just call me Alba. No, Master is Master, so I think I will call you Master. Okay, I guess. Master is Master, but Clear is the name Grandpa gave to me. Grandpa? The one you were just talking about? Yes, however, he passed away. I see. A long time ago, Grandpa and I lived near the garbage dump in the Northern District. Garbage? A trash treatment center? So, you're familiar with that area, then? Yes, and Master. I said it earlier, but... Huh? It's about the other day, when we went to go save Mizuki-san. You were so cool back then, Master. I got excited just watching. Cool? You were as cool as you were when I took you back to the shop, my very own very cool Master. Now, you're... Claire takes a glance at me. You're cool right now, too, Master. I'm not sure if he's being sincere, or if he's, like, trying to hide the fact that he's not cool. You know... He obviously had to backtrack there. Yeah. I am flattered, but what Clear said puzzles me. That I'm cool. What does he mean by that? I think he's referring to your scrap powers, buddy. Well, I'll be here with you from now on, Master. I'll protect you. So, Master, please take care of me from now on, too. Clear closes his umbrella and gives a polite bow, leaning nearly 90 degrees. So, you're still going to call me Master then, I take it? I instinctively make a bitter smile and nod. He's really weird, but he doesn't seem like a bad guy. Master, please go to bed soon. It'll be tomorrow before you even know it. You're right. What about you, though? If you'll pardon me, I think I'll go sing on the rooftop for a little while longer. Okay, just be careful of the tiles. Oh, thank you very much. Clear bows to me once again. Later then, make sure not to fall off, okay? Yes. I go back into my room and close the curtains to the veranda. I lie on my bed and hear a faint sound of a song from the window. It's a gentle, soft voice, and it sounds like a lullaby. It's awfully relaxing. My bad mood gradually turns into a feeling of relaxation and I silently close my eyes. <laughs>